Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Limits Reptiles, and today I'm going to show you how a rat breeder treats a rodent. Unfortunately, we have a rodent that uh, does have a health issue that we have here with us, and I'm going to show you how we take care of that health issue. Now, let me give you the full disclosure. If you are a rat lover, or if you keep rats as pets, you're going to do this different than us. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you you should stop watching this right now because my treatment plan does not apply to somebody who's keeping pet rodents. You hear me? That's what I'm telling you. My treatment plan applies to somebody who's breeding their own feed for snakes. Okay? So, now once I show you the treatment plan and we get this rat fixed, or this rodent fixed, it's actually an African software rodent today. Once we get it fixed in our own special way here, then I'm going to tell you why we use this as a treatment plan. All the pet rat people gone? Listen, I'm going to tell you one more time. Pet rat people, leave. Trust me, you don't, you don't want to be here. Reptile breeders, aspiring reptile breeders, people who keep reptiles or are thinking about breeding your own food, this is how you're going to deal with that. One, you must identify the problem. There it is. Here it is. So this is our problem rodent. And as you can see, it has like a cancerous growth there on its tail area right there. See that? Leg, leg area. I'm holding the tail. That's its leg. Good call, Kurt. Rat Anatomy 101. There's a reason I breed the snakes and Kurt breeds the rats because I just called that a tail. So what we're going to do to treat it is it's really simple. We're going to come over here to a different tub. This tub should do. We're going to say hi to our zebra bee female. Oh, you pooped on here. I feel less bad about this now. We're going to drop it in there. Treatment then should commence momentarily. Uh, if you haven't figured out yet how we treat this, is it's pretty simple. Come on, I want this to be over fast. Uh, we are going to feed these off. If this rat doesn't get eaten by this snake, for whatever reason, the snake decides maybe it doesn't want to eat this week, or it doesn't like the glow of the camera lights, I will simply feed it to a different one. Here's the, the thought process. Do you need some privacy? You're thinking about it, just get it already. It's just extra protein. Some are gonna wonder, will that tumor, will that anything like that affect this snake and the negative at all eating it? The simple answer is no, it will not. Uh, how do we know that? We'll close that and see what we hear in a few minutes. If not, we'll feed it elsewhere. It will always be the first one we, we feed off on purpose. Because in the wild, as they get sick, they become the slow ones, the ones that are the dumber ones, for whatever reason, they don't move as well, you know, they, they get picked off. Animals who get sick in the wild frequently get picked off as prey. It's how the world works. So here, that rodent's probably lived longer than it normally would. Once that tumor gets bigger, that leg ceases to work, something, whether a snake or something else, is going to eat it. This is what's going to happen. So rather than take this thing to the vet and have a vet bill for a rodent, uh, that I'm going to eventually feed off anyway when it no longer is able to produce for us, it's better just to replace it for production purposes and feed it off. That is exactly how you treat rodent issues when you have a breeding operation. I'm going to tell you breeders are not taking their breeding rodents to the vet to fix a tumor. They're not taking them to fix an ear infection. They're not taking them to fix any of that. Those become the first ones fed off. Uh, that's just how the world's going to work. Now, the reason I told you if you were a pet person to leave is I probably just pissed you off. And this is not for the pet person. I understand. If you have a pet rodent and you've become attached to it, you may want to take it to the vet and see if they can fix it. And I support that. That's fine. I'd take my dog to the vet. I'd take my cat to the vet. I'd take myself to the vet if I could get away with it cheaper than the doctor. I understand and I support that decision wholeheartedly. But in here we're raising food. Food is food. We're, we, we cannot justify from a business standpoint having a $200 bill for something that I'm going to take and feed off in a month anyway. Just feed it off now and start the rotation. Kurt, anything you want to add to that plan? No. All right, let's go ahead and uh, actually we don't, we'll check it off camera because this whole video is not about watching a rat die. This whole video is just about that's how you're going to take care of the problem. Don't dump extra money for vet bills into your feeder program. Feed those things off. Uh, there's no point. No point. So, all right. That's all we got, and we will catch you all next time.